What mathematical sign do we have? That's what Adler believed in. So look around the room. Look around the room. And see who's here. I always feel energized and enthused and excited when I come to Romania. The other thing that's on the professional side, on the personal side, it's a chance for me to spend time alone, to reflect, to think, to write new ideas when I'm here. So I, I get to do things that I love. I love to teach and, and think and see my friends and, and make new friends. And it's also a time to reflect, to be alone, to see new country, to, to cleanse. Part one. What we fear. De ce ne temem? Being too much. Să fim prea mult. Being loved. Să fim iubiți. Being seduced. Să fim seduși. Being betrayed. Să fim trădați. Choices. Alege. And you know if you lived during communist times there Și weren't a lot of choices. Că dacă ați trăit în comunism, pe atunci nu erau prea multe alege. And now there are many, many, many Sau choices. Sunt o mulțime de alege. I love these choices. A. A. B. B. C. C. All of the above. Toate cele de mai sus. None of the above. Nici una din cele de mai sus. Can't decide. Nu mă pot hotărâ. Won't decide. N-am să mă hotărâsc. Will decide later. Poate mă decid mai târziu. Or want someone else to decide. Uh, mai bine să decidă altcineva în locul meu. This year's topic is about family stress. And here's how the topic evolved for me. I'm 71 years old, and throughout my life, I've always had older men around me that have been very influential in my life. When I was about three, I moved in with my grandfather and my grandmother and my mother. My father was in the military, and my grandfather was a gentle, kind soul. He was ill with palsy. And, but I remember him as a gentle, kind soul. And then when I was four, I moved in with my great uncle, my mother, and my father. My great uncle was 77 when I met him. And he was a wonderful man to me. He taught me about people and where people worked and where people lived. And then about Five years ago, I met a man from Idaho whose name is Tom, and he was in his late 70s, and we began to talk at, at lunch, and I began to write down ideas. And I said at the end of the lunch, I will do it. And we decided that we would write four workbooks for families. The first workbook we would call Family Structure. Who is in your family? The second workbook is called family strengths. What is strong about your family? What is, the, what, are, what is good about your family? The last, the third book, was about family stress. What are the challenges, the distractions, the surprises, the unfortunate incidences that occur in every family's existence? And the fourth one is family social interest. How our family contributes to the good of the world. So this year's topic is family stressors. How we avoid dealing with our fears. Cum evităm să facem față temei? We keep them hidden. Le ținem ascunse. <coughs> We're afraid. Ne temem. And we won't let anyone know. Și nu vom lăsa pe nimeni să știe acest lucru. When I was a boy, my mother tells me that I grew up in a family where people spoke only Danish for a little while. My mother was, was a school teacher. She would be gone. I would stay with my grandfather and grandmother, and they would speak only Danish. So I was accustomed as a little boy to two languages. And my mother tells me that I used to say when I was a little boy, when I grow up, I'm going to go back to the old country. In other words, I was going to go back to, to Denmark. When I came to Romania for the first time, 
felt like I had returned to the old country. When I came here the first time, I thought, this is something I'm familiar with. I don't know the language, I don't know the people, but I know it's Europe, and I have my roots in Europe. And uh, I want to, I was asked to come to Romania, and then I was asked again, and again, and again, and I'm honored and humbled to come here and teach and learn. Well, hopefully they will understand the good things that their families have done to cope with stressors in their life, what strategies they've developed, what strengths they've developed, what skills they've developed. They can reflect and identify, yes, we have overcome some stressors in our family. And yes, there are some things that we don't do in our family that we maybe could do, that we could learn about and learn other ways uh, to cope with the stress in our family. We will also spend some time talking about how to prevent stressors. There are some things that we can do so that our, our families and ourselves can reduce the stress in our lives. Well, I live in Nebraska in the U.S. And there were two men who did lots and lots of work on what makes strong families. And this morning when I was working, I looked up these six ideas, these six uh, traits of healthy families. And I've written them down. The first one is committed is commitment. We have a commitment to our family. We are committed. We feel like we belong to this group of people. So commitment is one. The second one is time together. To be a family, family members need to gather together in family gatherings, family holidays, uh, family uh, fun. Families need to do that. The third thing that these researchers have indicated is that families need to show appreciation for one another. And we can show appreciation by how we act and what we do. We also need to show appreciation by our language, by the way that we talk to one another, by being kind and caring and compassionate and also firm uh, when necessary, when we talk with our family. We also need to have good communication. And lots of families struggle with the idea of talking. How do we talk? And we can talk about the weather, or we can gossip, or we can do talk about the government, or talk about what our neighbors are doing. And that's probably okay. And I don't like the gossip part. I think sometimes we need to communicate, we need to learn how to solve problems, we need to be able to share with others what's going on in our lives. Uh, and in communication, it's really difficult sometimes to talk about topics that we don't talk about in our families. Maybe we don't talk about death, maybe we don't talk about uh, someone's, someone's physical problems, sometimes we don't talk about family problems. We act as if there's no elephant in the living room, but there's a huge elephant in the living room that everybody dances around. And maybe we need to begin to gradually talk about the elephant in the living room. Not dive on top of the elephant, but gradually talk about that elephant. And that's the communication piece. I also, uh, these, excuse me, these uh, writers, also talked about spiritual wellness. And when they wrote about the spiritual wellness, I think they were talking not only about a spiritual wellness, but a philosophical wellness. Uh, that if I am not spiritual, that I have a philosophy that's a positive, energizing uh, philosophy, and it helps energize and, and uh, helps other people to do to do well in life, and we need, or a spiritual life, a belief in some system, some uh, idea of what or who or how God is. And the fifth, the sixth thing 
The sixth idea is that the families need to learn how to cope with crisis. How does our family cope with crisis? Now, we have several opportunities. One, we can freeze. We can just like this, like there's nothing we can do. And we probably freeze our jaws, too. Or we can fly. We can go away. We can get away from the situation. Uh, or we can fight. And I think those are unhealthy. I think that we need to approach each other, as Adler would say, as equals, equal to the right to mutual respect and, and, and equal in the right to human dignity. Is that easy? No. Can we learn to do it? Yes. Does it take time? Yes. I go through these again. I like them. Commitment, time together, appreciation, communication, spiritual wellness, or I will add philosophical wellness, and coping with crisis. These are, these are assets or strengths that I think will help families be healthy, strong, and to create a better world. And by the way, the apropos, purpose of keeping things complicated și apropos, scopul de a ține lucrurile complicate is so we don't have to do anything. Este că să nu facem nimic în privința lor. We can say, oh, what's complicated? Uh, spune, e prea complicat. And this happened, and that happened. S-a întâmplat asta și asta. And this happened, and that happened. S-a întâmplat și asta și cealaltă. And therefore I don't have to do anything. De aceea nu trebuie să mai fac nimic. So I try to keep things very, very simple. Așa că eu încerc să țin lucrurile destul de simple. We become depressed. Devenim deprimați. We blame others. Dăm vina de alții. It's your fault. E vina ta. And that's a way to not be responsible. We live in fantasy. <laughs> Therefore, we don't have to look at reality. <laughs> How we begin dealing with our fears. We muster the courage to face them. General advice, I will offer some ideas about general advice and offer some ideas about specific specifics. I will start with the general. In Romania, my Romanian is really bad. But I've learned three words that mean a great deal to me. And I would, when I would work with families with an autistic child, I would give them three words. Courage. Speranza, Ushurel. And to develop this in the family for the parents is to develop the courage. The courage to go day by day, the courage to say to themselves, we can do this, we can figure it out. We will commit to help our child and ourselves and our family as we move through this crisis. So it's a commitment to self, to others, and to our family. We need to develop courage. Courage is a belief in ourselves and our strengths and, a, and courage is the, is the uh, emphasis on the assets, strengths, contributions, and connections of other people. I would also teach the parents, or at least help them, Understand to never give up hope. Speranza. Never give up hope. The third, third idea is Usherel. And I learned Usherel in Bucharest. I was talking to a young cab driver, and he was it was in the middle of the city, and we there was all kinds of cars and all kinds of beeping going on, going around going on. And the cars were seemed to me very, very close to one another, and then we were off in a, in a small area. And a friend of mine went up into his flat to get some books, and the cab driver said to me, I, I said to him, how do you learn to drive in this traffic? And he said, Usherel. And I think that's how we learn to, to drive, to move through the autism, is Usherel step by step, by step, by step, easy, calm. And I think one of the things I would also tell autistic parents, and 
autistic family members is look what your child can do now that he couldn't do when he was born or she was born. Look what you know and your family members know that you didn't know when this child came into your family. Look at the progress you've made. Look how far you've come. Then I would go back to Adlerian theory. One of the five factors in the development of lifestyle, that is in the development of personality or the way that we typically think, feel, and act and believe as we move through the world, is how we, manage, how we manage exogenous factors. That is, factors that we are unprepared for. And in the autistic family, before the autistic child was born, it's my opinion, that something happened in the lives of the parents that they were not prepared for long before the child was born. So I would ask from a thera therapeutic point of view, when you were a small child under the age of 10, and something happened in your life that you weren't prepared for, what did you want or need from other people that you may or may not have received. For example, I was in Brasov and I was doing a workshop and I asked a group of people uh, if they could help me by remembering something that happened before the age of 10 or 11 in their lives that they were not prepared for. And two young women raised their hand and one said, a tornado hit our village. And another woman said, my kitty died. So then the next question is, what did those individuals want or need when they were, when those events happened in their lives? The answers to those questions, for example, if someone said I needed education, I needed honesty, and I needed a, a, a role model. I needed to have someone show me how to, to grieve the loss of my kitty. Probably when the autistic child comes into the family, that, that person needs the same thing. Communication, honesty, and someone else who has had an autistic child or understands autism. So I want to go back to the parent's childhood and find an an event that they were not prepared for. And I'm not looking for trauma. I'm looking for an event that happened in their lives. They changed schools. Uh, for example, when individuals live in a small village, sometimes they go to high school uh, in a larger city, and they come into the larger city, and they were not prepared. They don't know what to do. That's an example of an exogenous factor. Much the same as an autistic child comes into the family and we don't know what to do. So we need to ask the parents, how can I be helpful? What would be the most, what would be three or four things that would be helpful for you as I work with you, your child, your family, and the school? Find your path. Find your way. Make sure that as you find your way, yourself and to help others and to ask for help. Now, I will give you four Romanian words that I believe describe what I would tell a child. The first word I would tell them is destinatia. Set a goal, a big goal. I want to be, I want to make a difference, I want to others, I want others to be comfortable, I want to show the world to other people. Then the second thing that I need is I need drum. I need help, I need a map to the goal. Along the way, the third Romanian word is I need this I need distraction, I need fun, I need enjoyment. And the fourth Romanian word is I 
maybe dormant. I need to rest. I need to take care of myself. And I would tell children that I would teach them that if I possibly could. Dare to go deeper. Get off the surface. Depășește suprafața și Go deeper. în profunzime. Seek deeper understanding. Caută înțelepciuni mai profunde. Dare to meet your shadow. Îndrăznește să ți întâlnești umbra. We all have one. Cu toți avem o astfel de umbră. Carl Jung talked about the shadow. Carl Jung vorbea despre uh, umbra. Dare to forgive. Îndrăznește să ierți. I live where there are four seasons. Eu locuiesc într-o zonă unde se fac antipuri. I live uh, in a city about the same size as Sighișoara. Locuiesc într-un oraș de mărimea orașului Sighișoara. But it's, for, it's rolling hills where I live, fields Dar and rolling multe, hills. Multe, multe dealuri și câmpii acolo unde locuiesc eu. I live uh, a long ways away from uh, an airport. I drive two hours to get to an airport. Trebuie să călătoresc două ore ca să ajung la un aeroport. And we have snow. Și avem zăpadă și noi. And I was thinking today, and I told some people about snow. And I read this recently in a book that I've been reading. That the snow covers the earth and brings purity back by its color. And when we have that purity of a new snow, și când avem acea a noi zăpezi, many times after the snow, there's a very calming, pretty time. De, de, de regulă, urmează o perioadă calmă, liniștită, după and, prima de and this writer talked about that being a time to forgive others. Și acest scriitor vorbea despre acea perioadă ca fiind o perioadă bună pentru a ierta pe ceilalți. And to forgive ourselves. Și de a ne ierta pe noi înșine. I would tell parents that, according to Adlerian theory, that there are three innate capacities of each child that need to be developed. The first capacity is creativity. Mm -hmm. the that is the capacity to make decisions. The second capacity is the capacity to be intelligent. We'll talk a little bit about the idea of intelligence. I think that intelligence is much more than a number. And I think that, that I like very much the ideas of, a, of a, an American psychologist named Howard Gardner. And Howard Gardner says we need not ask how smart is a child that is a number or a grade, but how is the child smart? And I like that thinking of asking, how is the child smart? And Howard Gardner has identified eight kinds of intelligences. And the first intelligence is, is word intelligence. People are good with vocabulary. They can read. They, they love words, love, love writing and novels and, and poetry. Second kind of smart is people. There are people who are really good with people. So that's the second kind of smart. There are people who are who are good interpersonally. They just understand how to get along with others. There are people who are self-smart, who understand themselves, who are reflective. Those are the spiritual people, the psychotherapists, the people who seek to go inside and understand themselves. There are also people who are really good at logic and numbers. We'll call it number smart. They're logically, mathematically smart. They just get how to do computers, or they get statistics. They can solve problems. They understand it. The fifth kind of smart that, that Howard Gardner talked about is music smart. There are people who always have music around them, or can create music, or can express themselves musically. Um, music smart. The sixth kind of smart is nature smart. There are people who love the out of doors and they want to be out of doors or they know about the out of doors. They know the different kinds of trees, the different kinds of animals. They know the different kinds of fish. They may love to fish. They may love to look at the stars and study the stars, but those are people who are nature smart. There are also people who are body 
not smart, people who are good athletes, uh, people who can, who can knit and tap and sew, people who can do wood carving, their hands and fingers are good, the grandmothers who can cook a great meal uh, and make it very pretty. They are mathematically smart and they are also body smart. And the last kind of smart is people who are picture smart. They take pictures and pictures and pictures and they love movies and they can draw and they represent life through a visual point of view. So I would attempt to develop those eight kinds of, uh, of intelligence in kids. I would also, to parents, I would say develop and show your kids how to be interested in others. How can I, at an early age, learn to help others? Children, when they are born, if they are normal and they are placed on mother's belly, they move toward mother's breast. They are seeking social connection immediately after birth, if their birth is normal. And I think they seek that social connection all of their lives. We need to then allow kids to develop not, so, not only social connection, but social awareness and social activism. That is, we need to act in our lives to work for the good of others, at the same time balancing ourselves. We take care of ourselves and we help others. Take care of ourselves and help others. I would tell parents then, then three things. Develop the child's creativity. Help them make decisions. Help them make choices. Would you like brown bread or white bread or no bread? You decide. Would you like an apple, an orange, or a pair, you decide. And we need to have children begin to make decisions early. They begin to make decisions when they're six months old anyway. Uh, they make decisions about who they want to have hold them. They make decisions about uh, what foods they like and don't like. We need to, for, from that point forward, offer them choices. We need to give them opportunities to hear someone be firm, fair, and friendly with them when they offer choices so that when they are adults, adolescents and adults, they continue to make good choices. Okay. So, three things I would tell parents. Develop intelligence, develop creativity, develop social interest, and the fourth most important, spend time together alone with the child with the television, the computer, and the mobile turned off. Today, the day that you are today, now, when we do what we like to do, there needs to be two parts. Again, we need to do what we like to do, and what we like to do needs to help others. So that's the idea, that, that what we do what we like to do, and what we do helps others. And, and we need to have a balance of doing what we like to do, and also, I say again, help others. I am a Ia am învățat numai despre Crastavets. Nu știu dar dacă te ascultă domnul Zugar despre frică, despre cartea sau despre buti. Ce e frică, ce vreau, ce cartea? Eu, 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 o să nu mai un zece pe Crastavets, ia să vezi. Dă-mi exemplu! E o propozițiune simplă! Eu am un Crastavets! Crești la tablă? Bună, Elisa! Eu, este subiectul? of the young man, the ability to memorize lines, the ability to have a face that's magic, a style that's engaging, people who love what they're doing, people who enjoy life, who know that their work makes a difference.
for example, right that I like Mondays. That's when the garbage man comes. And the garbage man comes on Monday. And I always want to talk to him and say, thank you. Thank you for doing your work. And, and I, I like people who are doing life's work. And life's work is, uh, Adler says, there are five challenges that all of us have that we deal with. And that our life's work is to work and play. It's one of them, five challenges. The first one's work and play. And the second one is self-care and self-confidence. How do I take care of my body? And how do I take care of my mind? I only have one body and one mind, and I need to take good care of it. But the third thing is we need to meet the challenge of family and friends and community. And the fourth one is the idea of intimate relationships. How am I going to be as a partner to another person in life? And the fifth thing is spirituality or phil uh, or philosophical values. I need to figure out those five. And if I can see people moving toward resolving those issues in socially acceptable ways, that brings much joy and happiness to me. I love to watch the shepherds in Romania. I love them. And I'm reminded the stories of how the shepherds were selected in small villages. If there were six or seven or eight families that had three or four sheep each, they could not tend them, so they found someone in the village that they trusted. And someone in the village that they would trust to take their sheep away. And that would treat their, their sheep healthy way and to disappear and then come back and they would protect the sheep and they would do what needed to be done for the good of the sheep. I like that idea very much. They were selected individuals. They were trusted much like parents are trusted with their children, much like teachers, much like the community is trusted with the families to create a better I like very much the shepherds. I also like to watch the shepherds with their hands on the, their staff. And what they're doing is they might be doing nothing, but they're always observing. They're watching what needs to be done. What needs to be done with this group of animals that has been given for to me to be taken care of. What can I do for the good of them? They will give back to me. And the shepherd also has helpers. He has dogs that he has trained. And I think that's important that we train others to be helpers in the world. I like very much the idea of the shepherds. Uh, and when I, when I ride the trains in Romania, I'm always looking for the shepherds. I have a chip in my pocket. I have a small coin, looks like a coin, and I carry it. And at one time in my life, I was abusive of alcohol. I did not consume alcohol in a smart way. When I drank, I drank stupidly. And 34 years ago, I decided to stop drinking. And I have consumed no alcohol in the last 34 years. In fact, almost 35. And for me, that's been a great personal accomplishment is to stop drinking and move from a useless way of living to a useful way of living, from the minus to the plus. And that's been not a good person when I was drinking. And I'm not proud of that, and I have made some changes. I also did some good things when I was drinking. Uh, I got a bachelor's degree and a master's degree and a PhD. Uh, however, I was more concerned with me than with helping others. Mm -hmm. One of my, one, one of, two, 
my second uh, personal accomplishment is, is being married to Karen for almost 13 years. It's been a wonderful, wonderful adventure in love and kindness and warmth. My father loved his work. I was raised in the fields. We had, like, we had animals. These animals need to be cared for 365 days a year. So one of the things that I learned to do is work 365 days a year. And I learned to work hard. My father was very, very well organized. So was my mother. So I have that organizational skill. And I'm not very good at taking time for myself. However, my enjoyments are simple. A nice evening, a nice visit with people. I love to go to basketball games. I go to about a hundred basketball games a year. I am persistent and I am disciplined. I will do what I say I'm going to do, except throw things away. <laughs> and I, there are other things that I don't do well. Uh, but I am persistent and I have had the good fortune to be able to think well and to be able to put my ideas on paper. I have had the good fortune to be well educated. Uh, I thank my mentors, my teachers throughout my life for teaching me. Mm -hmm. It's really, really very important. And I, I love being a teacher. I taught uh, for almost 50 years mm -hmm. and I like very much being a teacher uh, and sharing my ideas. And at the same time, I'm also learning. And I'm learning uh, new ways of being, new ways of interacting, new ways of thinking. Mm -hmm. And I think at my age, at 71, I begin to think about how I want to be remembered, what I want to leave. Uh, I think I have another 20 years of life left. And I think I, I'm trying to figure out, and I think I've figured out how I can be helpful the rest of my life. Okay. I think probably a sense of equality, a sense of mutual respect, a sense of wanting to understand and also understanding, a sense of talking and learning to solve problems, learning to cooperate. Uh, I think the most learning to solve problems uh, together as a, as a team mm -hmm. and encouraging and supporting each other in our endeavors and encouraging and supporting each other through our crisis. Uh, we have had uh, two parents with Alzheimer's. Uh, we have had three parents that, we have, uh, that have died since we have been uh, married. There would have been a time in life I would have told you I don't know. And I think that the journey to understand God is a personal journey. And for me, I can tell you it's been a slow, evolving journey. And I would first of all start with the idea of Alfred Adler. Alfred Adler was a psychiatrist who lived in Vienna for most of his life. He was born in 1870 and died in 1937. And he wrote this idea that God is perfection. However we would define God, God is perfection, and all of us are moving toward God, moving toward perfection, knowing we'll never get there. So we are imperfect human beings moving toward a perfect God. I began this evolution of spirituality by attending church and churches in the United States. And then that didn't seem to fulfill me, uh, although 
although I have a great deal of respect for all religions, I began to study uh, a little bit all the religions of the world, and there seemed to be one unifying factor that gathered all the religions together, and that is love. So I, I, develop, I have developed over time five beliefs that I use as a prayer. And I can tell you my definition of God is I have no idea what or who or how God is, but I believe there's something out there that is bigger, better, more creative, more socially interested, more intelligent than I am, and I am in awe. So I have five, five simple kinds of ideas for me that I repeat four or five times a day that is my spiritual life. And I say these things. I say God is love. Is peace. God is forgiving. God is everywhere. God is a mystery. And I can turn that into very personal, a very personal way of thinking. God, I need love. God, I need peace. God, I need uh, forgiving. God, I need to recognize everywhere of everything, and God, I need to cope with the mysteries of life. I can also say, God, help others seek peace, Let's help others seek love, help others be forgiving, help others see every, the, the goodness of everything and everywhere, and help others accept and know the mysteries of life. That is what my spirituality is about, that's where I got my thinking, that's where I arrived in my thinking. I don't think my thinking is done. Uh, I just said something to you that I've never said out loud before. Uh, yes, thank you for asking me questions and allowing me to share my ideas, my imperfect ideas. They're, these are my ideas. They are gathered from Alfred Adler, who gathered his ideas from many, many sources. Dare to open your heart. Dare to be humble. Dare to lend a hand. Dare to dance. With the mystery of life. Thank you for listening. Thank you.